thing about precision planting is is that even though we are a a hardware company where we make uh, all these hardware solutions it all starts with the agronomy uh, the yield benefits to to the grow uh, that's that's the critical part that's where where you get your your return on your investment uh, for, for purchasing precision planting equipment and we've found that the key is the success uh, is the start of the seed so I need the young plant to do very, very well up through that V5, V6 stage of the corn plant uh, to set the maximum yield potential uh, that I can get from the corn. Uh, ones that emerged all, of, all together, even emergence uh, versus late emergence. Um, what are the most important things uh, for the planter pass to set the most amount of yield possible because we've said that we need to set it early uh, in the corn plant's life. The very first building block, the most important thing, is emergence. We need all of the corn plants to come up out of the ground at the same time and you have even emergence across the field. The next building block is singulation. So with singulation, I'm talking about meter performance. Uh, so one seed every time, not skipping a seed and not having doubles. The next building block then is spacing. Uh, and then the final block of the ear count pyramid for uh, highest yield is population. So as we look at this, uh, the most important thing I need to focus on first and get right first is emergence. The next thing that I need to focus on then is singulation. Uh, once I get that completely right, I will focus on spacing. And then finally, once I get all of the rest of these right, then I can worry about population. Here you see someone has, uh, from our company has gone in this field with young plants growing and they've placed flags for plants when they come up. So I may place a flag for red for the first day of plant. First day I saw any plants in the field. So all plants that emerged that day, I put a red flag. And then the next day I came back and all new plants that didn't have a flag yet, but now came out of the ground, I put a blue flag. And then the next day I put a flag for new plants that had come up again. So I'm classifying this field of how many hours after the first plant came up does each new group of plants come up? So at the end of the year, we hand harvested these plants. You can see my flags here in the row of when I first classified those plants coming out of the ground. Uh, and then we've done, uh, harvested those ears by hand and they're doing uh, counts to count the size of each of those ears. And we found, as we classified those plants, the plants that were one leaf color behind in their initial coming out of the ground. So uh, the plants that were one leaf color behind, you can see the yellow boxes, I have a smaller ear. Those late plants were somewhere between uh, 25 to 40% smaller. The corn plants that were two leaf colors behind produced very, very little. So you can see here a, a very, very, very small ear uh, that was 80% smaller uh, in weight of grain, or this plant here actually produced no ear at all, no harvestable ear on that plant. So seed to soil content. Um, you can see here that these seeds are not pushed all the way down into our trench, but there's an air gap underneath them. Um, so that seedling will not bring in water as consistently uh, as one that has good seed to soil contact. Uh, so our solution for this uh, is called the Keaton Seed Firmer. The Keaton Seed Firmer is a simple device that runs in the furrow uh, 
pressing each seed down into the bottom of the furrow, giving consistent depth and good seed to soil contact. So if I have too much force pushing down on the row unit, uh, I then that weight gets carried by the gauge wheels of the planter uh, and can cause compaction. So here you can see uh, these roots are not able to get out of that seed trench. So another picture of roots that were growing in an area of compaction. Many times you will also see slotting later on if the ground dries out uh, where that seed trench is cracked back open. And as you can imagine, that's not a, a good environment either. So here's an example of, a, of an ear that is much, much smaller than we would desire uh, because it was growing uh, on a plant that had too much compaction in the ground and not a good root system to feed it. On the other side of downforce management, we can have too little force on the row unit. Uh, too little force results in seeds that were not being placed consistently at the depth that you desire to place them. So these plants end up coming up late. Here with this one leaf color behind, I have about a half an ear potential. Uh, and then you can see that in pictures in the field. This guy produced almost no ear here versus the plant next to him producing a nice ear. This plant here produced a very nice ear. This plant, one leaf color behind, produced about half the year. Um, so the 2020 seed sets, if we add this to the planter, uh, we give you eyes in the cab uh, to be able to manage downforce and get even emergence. So the downforce box on the 2020 gives me some numbers here. Ground contact is the number that tells me that I'm getting all of my plants to death. If I'm carrying weight on those gauge wheels 100% of the time, I'm confident that all of my plants will get to death. And I won't have any shallow seeds uh, that are in uneven emergence, uneven moisture and heat in the environment. Uh, margin then, is a number that tells you how much weight you're carrying on the gauge wheels. All right, so um, field view then, uh, we add an iPad to the 2020 seed set system where we get high definition visualization of what the 2020 is telling me in the downforce box here. Uh, so this map uh, is a map showing blue dots where uh, that indicates a loss of ground contact, uh, where I don't know if the, that row unit achieved the depth it was trying to achieve anymore. Um, and then red dots are indicating uh, a high amount of force on the row unit. Uh, in this case, it was set to red being over 200 pounds. Uh, in those areas, I have the potential for compaction uh, and a poor root system. This map here, uh, as you see, uh, this grower would start out uh, planting here, and as he would go along, he would have some red, some yellow, uh, and as he went along, it would go to blue. Uh, and then this pattern uh, happens again and again throughout the field. Uh, can anyone imagine what might cause this sort of pattern in the field? The weight of the seeds. The weight of the seeds, exactly. Uh, so as he filled the planter, uh, he had more weight on the row unit from the weight of the seed. And as the box was <laughs> emptied, uh, he would lose ground contact uh, and cause late, late emerging seeds. He would fill the planter back up with seeds. Uh, and this pattern would continue throughout the field. And so, as you can imagine, uh, before this person had a 2020 and had this information, 
uh, that they were seeing happen as they were planting, uh, they might see yield change through this field and not know why. Uh, they had no idea that downforce management was causing this problem for them through the field. So they might have thought every year when they harvested that this area of the field was lower producing and they didn't know why. They thought maybe the soil type was not as good or maybe he thought he had a water problem in that area of the field. But in reality, uh, now that he has the information uh, to know how to manage the planter better, um, he can see that it was a downforce management problem, not some other problem that, that he couldn't figure out. And he, this is a problem that we can solve um, with our tools available, such as downforce. Um, Okay, Delta Force uh, replaces the springs or the airbags on the row unit uh, with a hydraulic cylinder uh, that we're able to control that hydraulic cylinder so that rather than the entire planter getting one setting for downforce uh, that either doesn't change or changes very slowly, uh, the Delta Force system, I now have each row acting individually based on the information that the weight pin or strain gauge that we put on each row unit gives the 2020 uh, so that in a very high speed I can change the force in the cylinder to either push down harder or actually it can lift up on the row unit as well. Uh, I measure uh, the weight on the row unit through a strain gauge here, as I mentioned. I measure that 200 times per second, uh, and then I react almost just as fast as I'm measuring. So here we have some maps to visualize uh, what is happening. Uh, so there's two maps. One is the applied downforce. Applied downforce is how much that cylinder is either pushing down or lifting. And so that results in a downforce map. The downforce map is the actual pin readings from the strain gauge on the row unit of how much weight is on the gauge. So you can imagine I want the downforce map to be very consistent. I want uh, the right force on the row unit all of the time, uh, whereas the applied downforce map shows me the variability in the field. Here you can see uh, an aerial image of a place where downforce was not managed properly. Uh, so you can see the effect. Uh, I believe he uh, forgot to turn it on at the beginning of his pass. He, he had his hydraulics off uh, to, his, to his downforce system. And uh, it made a big difference, right? Love you.